Let's see, how did we do? Well, the first one, acceleration, is probably the easiest. Remember, it's the same force for both. It's the same force for both. So the one with the smaller denominator will have the greater acceleration. Remember, the compact or smaller car will have a mass of just m. And the larger car will have a mass of 2m. So the acceleration will be greater with a. Now, it's a greater acceleration. Therefore, it's going to achieve a greater velocity when it hits that cliff. Okay, it's a greater velocity when it hits that cliff, so the velocity will be greater for the compact car. Okay? Now, <clears throat> intuitively, does it make sense to you that if I have a heavy car and a light car, and the same force. Is it going to take longer to get to the cliff if I have a heavy car or a, not, let's not say heavy, let's say a greater mass? What's well, going to be easier? Pushing a, a tiny sports car or a massive SUV? Well, it's going to take a longer period of time to push the larger car. So that's going to have a greater T. Now, remember, remember, same force, same force. So the one with the greater T will have the greater I. The one with the greater I will have the greater momentum change. Remember, we're starting from zero. So I equals the momentum change. So greater momentum change, the larger the final momentum, both starting at zero. Rewind that and see if you understand that. Force is constant, larger T, larger I. So the car that takes longer to get to the edge will have the greater impulse. Greater impulse, greater change in momentum, greater final momentum. So the B, the larger car, B, that will have a greater impulse and momentum at the end. Greater change in momentum. Okay. Now, I'll come back. We're going to do a few more, um, and then we'll quit. All right? Be right back.